Hello ladies and gentlemen, Tevron here, and welcome back to Danganronpa 2, Goodbye Despair, where we are investigating the double murder of Ibuki and Hyoko, and there's a lot of strange stuff going on here. Uh, we're not really sure what is quite going on, but there's things that don't add up with the evidence. When we first discovered Ibuki, Hyoko wasn't here. Then 15 minutes later or so, when we brought everyone back, she was. Uh, I think we just need more information to work out what exactly is going on. Let's uh, go ahead and look at this broken monitor. The shattered remains of a machine are spread all over the floor. I see. I see. This appears to be the surveillance camera unit. This, too, must be the will of causality. Kazuichi put it in the music venue for communication purposes. Hmm. Why is it destroyed like this? Um... Perhaps criminal psychology is at play here? What do you mean? Well... Even if they know they are not being recorded, there is no way the killer would tolerate committing a murder in front of a camera. Except they filmed Ibuki. Which there's problems with that, too, because there wasn't blood on the stepladder in the video, but... Fine. So that's why they destroyed the camera. Hm. Seems plausible enough. Then again, this just occurred to me, that might not have been Ibuki in the video. That might have been the killer. Because the bag over her head. Huh. That is a very real possibility, perhaps... We weren't seeing a live broadcast, but something pre-recorded. There's that alley with all kinds of equipment in there. Maybe they found another working camera. Recorded themselves climbing the step ladder at an earlier time. And that would also explain the blood on the step ladder. Huh. They'd hesitate to murder someone in front of a camera, and that's why the killer destroyed this? Then what was that thing I saw? Yeah. I... I may be wrong, but I think we're on the right track with that. Uh, okay, let's look in the staff room. There's a door that says staff only. Looks like the inside is a storage room. I might as well investigate in here, too. Any changes? Well, uh, Nagito's in here, so something must be going on. Uh, let's talk to him first. Nagito, did you come here to investigate this storage room too? <laughs> I just wanted to confirm what you were thinking. Is that it? Or is he trying to stand guard here? Who knows with him? Who knows? Hey. So, how about it? Did you find any clues? The tipped over step ladder on the stage? The duct tape binding Kyoko? That probably all came from this storage room. There might be other things from this storage room that they used for the crime. You always pretend to give me hints, but in the end, you're just going to be on the killer's side, right? I honestly think Nagito just switches his allegiance on a whim at times. <laughs> Aw, I'm not siding with the killer, you know. I'm just on the side of whoever acts in the name of hope. That's all there is to it. Except your definition of hope is one of the most twisted things that I think I've ever seen. But... That's the main reason why this case is really special. Because they're too dead? Man. But I can't say for certain, though. What is this guy saying? As usual, he's not making any sense. Hajime. By the way, Hajime, I still don't quite understand the details of what happened. Right? Hey, if you can explain it to me in detail, I think I'd be able to give you some more useful information. Really? You might end up confusing us again instead. You don't want to find the truth. You just want to make us suffer. How mean. That's not true. I'm doing this because I believe it's for everyone's sake. Oh well. For the sake of everyone's hope, I gladly become the enemy, and I won't even mind when I die. Damn it. Sadly, I think that's the truth. That's the main reason why I can't overlook this case this time. You act like you've overlooked cases in the past, which we know is not true. What does that mean? <laughs> Regardless, I guess you're not going to tell me, huh? 
then it can't be helped. I guess I'll just rely on my gut feelings. Gut feelings? Hey. You should come by later, too. I'll go there first and wait for you. Go where? To Hiyoko's motel room? Where exactly are you talking about? I mean, I can look on the map and see where the exclamation is, so... <laughs> well, obviously the movie theater. Well, yeah, that is somewhere we have to look, too, because that's where the hemp bag came from. After he said that, Nagito walked out of my sight. Movie theater? Why the sudden interest in the movie theater? I... Well, I, I do know it's the hemp bag, but... Alright, mirror? You can see your whole body in this huge full-length mirror. It's probably used for checking costumes. Huh. Stickers? There's a lot of stickers with the venue's logo placed here. It's like they made a much... Okay, this is the same... Oh, this is new. Huh? Compared to last time, it feels like there are less stickers than before. Am I overthinking this? Maybe not? Oh. Do you see what I see in the right there? That black wallpaper or whatever that is has a tear in it. That might just be matching to the piece of uh, paper that we found hanging from the batten. There's carpeting, wallpaper, and paint on the shelf. It's probably used for stage decorations. Hmm? This thick black paper that's folded up on the lower shelf, it looks like wallpaper. There are a lot of stickers post pasted all over the front side of this wallpaper. And this edge of the wallpaper... It looks a little torn, but what does this mean? Can we hold up our piece and see if they match? Hmm. Guess that's everything important in this storage room. Guess I should go back to the music venue. Oh, really? That's it? Guess the instruments don't really matter? Okay. Alrighty. So, why was that paper torn and hung from the batten? Hmm. All right, with this, we might be close to finished investigating the music venue. But I still need to talk to Mikan. I need to make sure I get those autopsy results from her. Oh, I figured we'd have to go and investigate other places before that. How about it, Mikan? Have you found anything out by now? <laughs> to tell you the truth, it's been very inconclusive. You got it wrong! But it's not my fault. This music venue is just too hot. Yeah, so you, you can't give us an accurate indication of when they died, which is what we expected, but... Because of the heat, I can't estimate the time of death. Because of the heat? Is that possible? Yes, it keeps the bodies from cooling at a natural rate. And they're never going to go below the 80 degrees. <laughs> the 86 degrees, rather, as that's what it's set on. If a body is overexposed to heat or cold, you won't be able to determine a precise time of death. I see. That might have been the killer's goal, you think? They covered up their time of death by using the heater to make the inside of the music venue hot. But that's weird. It's not really? Because of the video you saw, you assumed Ibuki died right then. But as I previously said about the video, it could have been pre-recorded and it might not even have been Ibuki but the killer. So, Ibuki and Hyoko could have been killed hours and hours ago, and we just would have no idea. But... Even if this heat is the killer's doing, there's... Is there any reason for them to cover up the time of death? Probably. If we were to be led astray by that video, and believe that Ibuki died right in that moment, then the person would have an alibi. I agree. As long as I saw it, it should be clear what order the murders occurred. But it's not clear at all because of the blood on Ibuki's shoes. First was Ibuki, then Hiyoko. No. I don't think that's the case. Unless they took her shoes off and dabbed them in the blood and then put them back on her. 
And as long as this is an imitation murder, there shouldn't be any mistaking the order of the murders. What do you mean an imitation murder? Yeah. What? Well, huh? Imitating what? Huh? You don't know Hajime? I thought everyone already knew. Please explain. See? It's a murder where the killer uses a creative work, like a song or a film, as an outline for their killings. I mean, I know what an imitation murder is in general, just what are they imitating? It's so common in detective novels, mangas, and video games that you start to get annoyed by it. How would an imitation murder be related to this murder? Well, based on the killing order and the way they were killed, it's clearly an imitation of that movie. Okay. That's, that's actually what Nagito meant about the movie theater. And poor Hajime refused to let us watch that movie. Can we watch it now? Good instincts. The assumption is an imitation murder is the reason why the killer killed two people. Hmm. The goal was an imitation killer. Even so, why did they feel the need to do something like that? Do you have a minute? Excuse me, if this was really an imitation of that movie, then is it possible that one more person might have been killed? Were there three killed in the movie? This, too, must be the will of causality. It's certainly conceivable. If the killer wishes to complete the imitation... Hold on a sec. What are you all talking about? An imitation murder? One more person might have been killed? <laughs> are you guys worried that there's going to be another victim? Then no worries. Things would get out of hand too fast if a bunch of people could be killed at once. So you do have the same rule in this one, only two murders per killer. I'm a real cautious fella, so I've prepared a perfect countermeasure. Hmm. Ahem. On this killing school trip, the same blacken can only kill a maximum of two people. Just like the previous game, it would have been really nice if you let us know this in advance. Huh? You mean... You've added another rule? Yep. Well, if killing everyone at once is okay, the Blacken would be able to secure an easy victory, right? Uh, maybe. I do think that killing literally everyone else would be a bit of an undertaking. <laughs> this new rule will prevent that. Make sure you slam it into your tiny brains. Um. If it is a maximum of two people, then there will not be any more killings? Since you're here anyway, can I ask you one more thing? You know, I just want to confirm one of the class trial rules. Hmm. I see, I see. As expected of you, you're very strict about games. Perhaps. I don't want to consider this possibility at all. And I don't even want to think someone else would do this. If two cases occur at once, what happens if there are two killers? Then they can each kill two people. Like I said, I'm talking about the possibility that Ibuki and Hyoko were killed by two different people. Or maybe that one of them killed the other and then killed themselves? That would mean that two killers exist at the same time, but we can only vote for one person, right? I am concerned. If we can only choose one based on a majority vote, the other person could certainly achieve victory. Yep. Yeah, you're right. See? So, what happens in that case? What about a case where there's three incidents instead of two, or if four incidents overlap one another? Silence! Shut up! Yeah. It's okay. I'll make extra sure something like that never happens. Hey. It's not very comforting. Meaning, two killers can't exist at the same time, so it's safe to say that applies to this case too? Wow. Eh. I don't like this. All right, fine, fine. That's right, there's always one killer at any given time. Thank you for that information. Even though we had to drag it out of you. Even if they had an accomplice, I'd have you figure out who the mastermind is. This is kind of depressing. Man, I ended up giving you a huge hint. She made me say it. 
Gamer brains are not to be underestimated. I should just shut up and go back to my cave. I see, so there's no possibility for two killers to exist at the same time. With this, I guess that narrows things down a little. Yep. That makes things a little easier. Fine. Plus, if the same killer can kill a maximum of two people. Taste your powerlessness! It means a third victim would be impossible. Imitation murder breakthrough. You guys keep saying that, and it sounds strange to me. What do you guys mean by imitation? They mean the movie you refuse to watch. That you instead promised Monokuma $1.5 million to avoid. Um... Uh, could it be you haven't seen it? Seen it? Seriously, seen what? So... Like I said, that movie. That is one thing in, that annoys me about some games of this sort, is they say, that guy, that movie, instead of referring to exactly what they mean. Oh my. When we first explored this island, Monokuma was passing out invitation tickets. Then the imitation is... Good instinct. Of course, it's an imitation of that movie. Well... Based on the murders this time, it closely resembles that movie, as if they were copying it. As if they copied the movie? I see, Nagito mentioned something about that. Then it can't be helped, I guess I'll just rely on my gut feelings. You should come by later too, I'll go there first and wait for you. The movie theater, yep. You... I see, so you haven't seen it. Still, it's not too late, I think. If Monokuma will let us watch it now. It's probably a good idea if you watch that movie before the class trial starts. Looks like I need to do that. Um... Then I should get going too. There are other places I want to investigate. Um... Where do you intend to go next, Chiaki? Hmm. Probably. The hospital, for sure. The first victim, Ibuki, was there. I don't know what was going on at the hospital in the first place. You are right. Thanks to that despair disease, we could not go there for some time. She's right. It might be good for me to investigate the hospital, too. There might be some clues related to Ibuki's death. For clues related to Hiyoko's death, I should try going over to the motel. There's still a lot of things I can do before the class trial. I'll definitely give it my all until then. Well, this one certainly does have more places to investigate, that's for sure. Yeah, we've got three exclamations, the motel, the theater, and the hospital. Uh, I think we're going to go to the hospital first. Oh, here's where you're at, Kazuichi. Hey, you prepared that surveillance camera unit, right? Hey, hey! Yeah, so? I didn't make any weird modifications or anything. It's not like I'm suspicious or anything. But you're sweating. Didn't you get this from that shady looking alley where all those machines were lined up? Maybe we should go look there too, even what? though it wasn't marked on the map. Yeah, I just tweaked it a little. Then, if there are other surveillance camera units, would it be possible to transmit a signal to the hospital from those cameras too? Man... No, that's impossible. Originally, surveillance cameras and surveillance monitors are only used as part of the same unit. The video that was filmed with the hospital camera can only be viewed on the hospital monitor. The video that was filmed with the music venue camera can only be seen on the music venue monitor. Hey. But if I left it like that, we wouldn't be able to communicate, so I decided to swap the cameras. So that's how you guys were able to view the hospital footage from the music venue and vice versa. However, each surveillance camera unit manages its broadcast based on a specific number. So even if you bring the same model camera or monitor, you won't be able to interfere with the signal. Meaning, even if another surveillance camera exists, it'd be impossible to broadcast with it. Huh? However, I didn't just swap the cameras. I modified them and increased the wireless range. If I hadn't done that, we wouldn't have been able to use it. Yeah, you're right. You did work on that. Brings up an interesting thing, though. From what he said, that means that the, that the video we saw couldn't have been pre-recorded. 
I'm fairly certain though, because of the inconsistencies such as the step ladder having blood on it, that it wasn't from the music venue. So, can we look at this? Maybe that's why the music venue camera and monitor were smashed so that we couldn't tell that they had been swamped. As long as the music venue surveillance camera unit is destroyed, it's impossible to broadcast with this. Hajime. There's something I wanted to ask you. You first discovered Ibuki's body at the music venue, right? But why did you go to the music venue? You had a reason for that, right? And that's something also that still bugs me. See, Chiaki didn't know that we had seen the video that we saw. But Nagito did. How did Nagito know that? Did you see something with this camera? That's right. No, oh, I also wanted to ask you that. It'd be different if the surveillance camera unit could record, but it's only good for household functions. And there is the ultimate confirmation that they can't record. Hey, hey. Tell me, Hajime. Yeah, that's exactly it. I saw a strange video in that surveillance camera unit. No blood on the ladder. I mean, I, I guess... Technically, the blood could have been put there or gotten on it later. But then there's the blood on her shoes as well. And there's no blood visible on the floor. It showed the music venue stage. There was a black curtain hanging there like there is now. You know what? The black curtain that's at the, at the music venue, we've confirmed, was not there originally. It doesn't fit correctly. There's another place where we've seen a black curtain, isn't there? In the upstairs of the hospital. I think we need to check that out. But the whole display was pretty dark because they were just using candlelight, and that would be a reason to not use the batten lighting that you were so worried about. There was a rope hanging from the ceiling, and beneath that there was a step ladder on the floor. And right away, a person wearing a hospital gown and a hemp bag on their head appeared. I didn't know who it was because their face was covered, but now I know that must have been Ibuki, except it's not. And it's pretty easy to tell that, because Ibuki had her black hair hanging from underneath the bag. You could, you could see wisps of it coming out, and you can't. This person. She walked straight to the stepladder without any hesitation. Yeah, there's definitely no hair hanging out of that bag. She climbed the stepladder of her own free will, and then she grabbed that rope and... That's all I saw. The candlelight being used must have been snuffed out or something because... The screen went dark all of a sudden, and it wasn't displaying anything anymore. Man... And that would explain why the step ladders don't match, too. Well, if the candlelight goes out, obviously nothing will show up. Modern surveillance cameras have infrared functions, so things can still show up even in the dark. But the one I got from the machine alley was a really old model. Uh, Hold on. Well? At the time, you said you didn't know the person wearing the hemp bag was Ibuki, right? Yeah. Hmm. You didn't know it was her, but you saw she was trying to hang herself. So you rushed over to the music venue to try to stop her. But I didn't make it in time. Hey. Well, if our if our hypothesis at this point is correct, she was long dead by the time we saw this happen on the camera. Still, if she climbed the stepladder on her own, does that mean she committed suicide? Wouldn't that mean she's her own killer? Well, with the disease she had, which was... A uber gullibility, she could have been just talked into doing it. Ibuki committed suicide. What do you think, Chiaki? Mm. There's no doubt Ibuki climbed the stepladder on her own, right? Yeah, there's no doubt. But there is. I mean, at this point, I think she probably did because of the disease she had, but we don't have actual evidence that she did it on her own. If so, hmm. 
You. Hey, don't think for so long. If you don't know, just be honest about it. Well, of course she doesn't. There's no way we'd be able to figure that out so easily. Mm. You okay, Chiaki? She knows something weird's going on here. She's suspicious, too. <gasps> oh, yeah. I need to investigate the conference room on the second floor. Great minds. Mm. I'm heading over there. <laughs> what the heck? She ran away all of a sudden. She said the conference room, but why would she mention the conference room all of a sudden? Black curtain. Also, I might just be overthinking, but did she seem a little upset? Surveillance monitor video, okay. Uh, we'll talk to you in a second there, Kazuichi. Oh, hello, Akane. Probably also need to check out Ibuki's room, but they're no longer labeled. Now then. Whew, I'm finally getting back to my normal self. All right. Hajime, help me out with my recovery. You can touch my boobs if you win. No, thank you. <laughs> she was bearable when she was quiet. It'd be so much better if she was still feeling the after effects. She'd beat me up if I said that out loud. Anyway, why are you here? Hey, hey! Well, I've never been sick or hurt before, so I had no idea, but... <laughs> hospital gowns are pretty comfy. I was thinking I might as well keep wearing one. Don't tell me you plan to wear hospital gowns from now on. Hmm. That's the idea, but it looks like they're out of stock. It looked like there was one gown for each patient's room, so I thought there'd be more in the empty rooms. There weren't any gowns? Not yeah. even the one that you were wearing previously? Yep, that's right. Ibuki died wearing one, so the only one left is the one Nagito was wearing. What happened to yours? <laughs> if I have no choice, then I should just use Nagito's. It's a unisex size, so I'll probably be able to fit in it. Hold on. What happened to the gown you were wearing? Huh? Are you saying I should wear the one I already wore? That's gross. Wearing clothes someone else was wearing is even grosser. Like? No time to dilly-dally. I totally left Mikan back at the music venue. Crap, I gotta go back soon. Well, it's okay since I already investigated the music venue, but leaving her on guard duty was a bad idea. Have these been cleared out? Looks like this is an open room. There shouldn't be anybody inside. Okay, so we're not allowed into... These rooms? Yep. Which there wasn't anyone in there. Which again, uh, where is Nekomaru at? Where is Monikoopa keeping him? Or has he just died and we've not been told? What's this? It's pitch black. I can't see anything. Uh, where's the switch? Hey. Don't turn it on. Huh? Chiaki, are you there? Cuz... If you turn on the light, it's gonna be fully exposed. It'd be embarrassing. Are you joking again? What's fully exposed? Hey. Hey, Hajime? If you poke out your eyes, you can turn on the light. I think she's joking. It's just she's not very good at it. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna poke them out? I'm not gonna poke out my eyes. Aww. Bummer. Troll fell. No sooner did she finish saying that, I heard the dry sound of curtains being drawn. There was a flash of intense light that stung my eyes a little. I squinted my eyes until they started adjusting to the light. Yeah. This is where it took place. Where's the stepladder, though? And where's the camera that was used to transmit downstairs? And I saw Chiaki had finished opening the curtain that was covering the window. Hey, hey. Were you surprised? Surprised? I don't get it. Well? I got it. Got what? See? The curtains in this conference room are designed to completely block out light. Hmm. 
There's a projector in here, so they were probably careful about light shining through. See? A black curtain that blocks light, and it's also long enough to reach the floor. It's perfect. A black light blocking curtain. That's why it was so dark. So is something wrong with it? No, but we need to discover the props that were used. We need to find the camera that was transmitting to the monitor downstairs. We need to find the step ladder. We need to find a second hemp bag. We need to find the candle. Mm. I'm still in the middle of investigating, so it's a secret. Yep, she's upset. But still, what was all that about? That bit about being embarrassing if I look and troll fell? Nope. I just wanted to mess with you. Yep, she's definitely upset. Why is she acting so childish? I guess I'm done investigating the hospital? No, we need to look in the other room. No! No, don't move on to a different place. Didn't mean to click there. Um... Hey, did I do something to make you angry? That's wrong. I'm not angry. I think. Well, are you or aren't you? If you're not angry, you wouldn't have done something so weird. Yep. Yeah, I'm already over what happened earlier, so you don't have to worry about it. I think. Did we do something to piss her off? Is she teasing me? I mean, that was my first assumption, but... Okay... See, it's not being hidden. Right. Nothing hidden behind this stuff, is there? There's the projector. Okay. Um, I'm going to check the on-call room. If Hajime doesn't, you know, buck and call seniority or whatever. Thank you. Alright, well, I don't immediately see what I'm looking for. Hmm. They had to have been put somewhere, unless we're chasing a red herring here. Alright. It won't let us... I mean, they could be stowed in the patient rooms, couldn't they? But it won't let us in there. Okay, um, I want to go check the alley, even though it's not marked as relevant on the map, just to set my mind at ease. Go down Electric Avenue again. Apparently all the machines here are used for things like wiretapping or taking secret videos. The surveillance camera unit used in this incident was the one Kazuichi obtained here and modified. But it looks like a surveillance camera unit... That's the same model is no longer available here. Yes. That is it. The broken monitor and camera that's in the music venue are decoys. The real ones that were there have been removed and the camera was actually used to film what we saw in the conference room and make it look like it was the music venue. Curious, curious, curious. That's very, very smart. Whoever did that. Which. Whoever did it. There was only one person who could do it. Mikan. That's why she went upstairs to the quote unquote on call room. She actually went to the conference room. That's why she was so insistent that we rest in the lobby. She had all this planned out. She got us to go to the lobby. She went upstairs, transmitted that signal, and then made it look like Ibuki was hanging herself at the music venue. But it was Mikon transmitting us a false thing from right upstairs. Holy shit. Uh, yeah, I mean, sorry. I just blew my own mind. Sorry. <laughs> well. Uh, well, 
there's still a couple of other places to investigate. I don't know exactly how we're going to prove this yet, as we've not found the props she used, the step ladder, and so on and so forth. But I'm pretty sure it's Mekon. Which is sad, because I kind of got to like Mekon a little bit through our interactions with her, but... I mean, that's where the evidence points. Anyway, we will pick up on the investigation and maybe even get to the first part of the trial in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you have, let me know in the comments and by leaving a like below. And of course, subscribe if you'd like to see more in the future. I have been Tevron, and until next time, friends, be excellent to each other. <laughs>